It gets even worse than lab-grown meat. Some systems that have been developed, even with the Deep Space Food Challenge, involve insects. Um, black soldier flies um, are such a great way to turn that inedible plant biomass into protein. Um, and then you just grind up the, the bugs and then put them into, you know, they make a flower, you can make crackers out of them. Um, but yeah, it's, it's weird. It's something we got to get used to. So earlier you mentioned uh, lab-grown meat, right? Yeah. So one of the, one of the things that I minored in in, in uh, college was uh, science communication. It was kind of one of those minors that I was a couple of credits away, and I was like, oh, screw it, I'll just take those classes just to get the minor. Um, but one thing we always focused on was you know the that bridge between uh, the, the you know science topics and and the public and how it's perceived from the public. When I hear something like lab grown meat, I, I I'm someone that likes meat from the cow, right? <laughs> so, but when you hear lab grown meat. It seems that a lot of people would be instantly turned off by lab-grown meat. How do you feel that some of these companies that are, you know, developing lab-grown meat or, you know, these mushroom systems can make the public excited about these new techniques and these new new food production? Yeah, um, that's a great question. Um, and, and this is, you know, half the battle of, of all of this, of, of, you know, all sciences is to make sure that people are on board because, you know, it gets even worse than lab grown meat. Some systems that have been developed, even with the deep space food challenge involve insects. Um, black soldier flies um, are such a great way to turn that inedible plant biomass into protein. Um, and then you just grind up the, the bugs and then put them into, you know, they make a flower, you can make crackers out of them. Um, but yeah, yeah, it's it's weird it's something we got to get used to um i will say with some of these foods going back into you know an international cuisine some of these parts of the diet are are big in different parts of the world um you know mycelium um different mushrooms different i don't think lab grown meat is that big yet um but insects that's that's big in parts of the world too and so you know it is about a, a cultural shift um and you know these are some of the things that may not take off huge on earth but um that may, still might be groups of the population that that find you know this is actually not that bad um and if they are you know really um passionate about making sure that their diet is sustainable might be something they look into. Uh, but with the case of, of lab-grown meats, um, this might be another thing that it gets developed simply because it's required. You know, I know you like meat from the cow, but, you know, if you want to pay for it to, to shipping a cow to space, you know, be my guest. But, you know, it's going to be hard to have any animal meat um, in space because, you know, it's just got a Noah's Ark it and just trying to send all these animals to space. They just start <laughs> getting to, like, ethics. Like, that's right. Like, there's the ethics conundrums of, like, these animals that maybe aren't aware of the risks that they're taking by going to space like you know is it uh is it ethical to, to be sending these animals to space um and so uh yeah some of these things we might simply have to have these different lab grown meats for astronauts and you know perhaps if that's something that you know kids looking up to astronauts see them eating you know maybe it's they they give it a try i think a big part of this is also um you know economic viability of some of these lab grown meats i know it's still kind of more expensive and so that's why people might be avoiding it a bit and i also think you know the biggest thing is also not like I've tried like um vegetarian bacon and i think the biggest issue with it is that people call it bacon because it's nowhere close to bacon and yeah. if you're going to compare it's it like, to uh, bacon it's like almost like bread it is a beef jerky uh beef jerky uh but it's made out of mushrooms okay yeah, yeah. but they still call it beef jerky yeah. And see, I get it for like the name of like, if you want to sell it, people like maybe people made the mistake and thought it was actual beef jerky or people are trying to like get it used to something that like people know. But at the same time, like I enjoy like vegetarian bacon, but not if I'm comparing it to actual bacon. Like I feel like they're two completely different things. And if I'm going to think that it's going to taste like this, it's going to turn me off when it doesn't. So you just kind of have to enjoy some of these things because of how they taste completely different than the original. But yeah, you know, and then it gets into health aspects, you know, there's a million different ways people change their diets. So uh, yeah, I think it's going to be slow. Um, I don't think you can force it upon anyone. Um, and, you know, hopefully it's something that, you know, the most sustainable option really gets traction because um, you're going to have to do this for space because, um, you know, you're not shipping up cows anytime soon. <laughs> we might have to do it for Earth. You never really know. That's right. But that's right. Yeah.
I, I kind of hate when I go to like a restaurant, a cauliflower steak or something, and it's oh, like, don't even yeah. call it that. No, don't, 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 yeah, don't work for us. That's right. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I, you know, and I'm curious, you, you know, talking about like lab grown meat and talking about these bugs that can be made into a flower. And it, it sounds kind of far fetched that you have people eating these. But again, in my head, it's like I could see a lot of people around the world where yeah. traditional, you know, meat or vegetables are not available this can become a viable food source and kind of help help at least some of the the food insecurity around the world you know and of course talking about communicating this to the public i think you're right setting expectations though is important uh but you know how do you how do you like get this investment into it you know how do you convince investors that this is the place to really put their attention and their focus on and that this is the future right because i think it's always you know you, you see companies like you know the impossible meat or i forget what the company's called right but for a long time, they were kind of dead in the water until finally people realized like, oh, our conventional, you know, farming system is just awful, you know, or we, our ranch system is awful. We can't keep relying on these cows and these slaughterhouses. We should come up with a new alternative. Um, yeah. Do you see kind of that pivoting point for this type of industry? You know, if, if I had the the secret on on how to make sure this stuff gets sold, I'd, I'd be much richer than I am now. But, uh, <laughs> you know, I, I think some of the things is these different opportunities. And so you know, people have to make sure that they're looking forward and seeing that, you know, the world that we live in today is going to be very different than 10, 20 years from now. Um, and so, you know, it's all about, you know, looking at where the world's headed and, you know, where off world is headed, you know, because a lot of these technologies are going to be needed for space. And, you know, we just saw yesterday Blue Origin um, and their national team got selected to be the second lander that's going to uh, send humans to the moon. Um, and so, you know, the, the wheels are turning, you know, people are, are the developments is happening. And, you know, a lot of the technologies that we're going to need to sustain a lunar base or a Martian base need to be in development now. Um, and these are going to be such huge industries. And, you know, if, if that's what it takes, I guess, for people to say, you know, I wouldn't have uh, invested in this if it was just about Earth. But because I see this going into space, sure. Um, and look, there's actually also some applications on Earth. And, you know, I think it's also about y'all talking about this. You know, I think you guys are doing such an important role here in making sure that, you know, these technologies, while, you know, maybe crazy at the time, is going to feel so, you know, common in, in a few years' time. So, um, you know, I think making sure that people understand it, because, you know, a lot of times people are a little bit worried about what they don't understand. So making sure that we have podcasts like y'all that are, are talking about these technologies and, you know, moving the world forward is going to be really important. Yeah. I think it's, it's also important to, to, to have people understand the economic benefits of it, right? Where yeah. if they see space, you see an unlimited opportunity. So yeah, of course yeah. I'm going to throw my money into this, even though I don't fully believe in what we're doing. Eventually yeah. I'll believe yeah. it and it makes me enough money. So. Yeah. And hopefully, you know, if you throw enough money at it, the technology gets developed enough, like with the lab grown meats that it becomes more affordable for consumers. And then, you know, then you just have like a, a snowball effect where, you know, now you have a lot of, you know, people on earth that are buying this. And so it just, you know, becomes pretty common. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know when I'm going to see Christian eating a horse fly. That's right. That's right. I'll try it. <laughs> yeah. I, I'll definitely try it. I'm, I'm not saying I wouldn't <laughs> eat it, but I'm just saying. I know. It's a little, a little, a little scary to try. For sure. For sure.